know, we cover we're covering the swimming pool, but that if there's any questions or any areas you you're specifically interested in. So Cecilia is a very quiet guest. I know we should start having music for these. For the waiting time. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This presentation is part of our sermon series. Uh, and it will be on residential swimming pools as proof for the building code. Uh, in this presentation, I chose to concentrate on the safety act and barrier requirements. That is usually uh, what brings a lot of questions from our, uh, from our customers or from our uh, uh, residents as far as uh, what is legal to do and what they are required to do. So uh, first of all, let's determine what constitutes a swimming pool and not a fountain or a water feature. So as per the Florida Building Code Chapter 4, a swimming pool is any structure intended for swimming, recreation, bathing, or waiting that contains over 24 hours or uh, uh, 24 inches of uh, water. In other words, if these uh, criteria is met, uh, that water feature must be treated safety-wise as a swimming pool. Who can make a swimming pool? Or who can uh, construct a swimming pool? Which is another question we we often get, especially from our general contractors. And as for the building code, a general contractor can build a swimming pool as long as it's a structural uh, part of the swimming pool, and it has to be part of his general construction. For example, if building a, a residence, and the swimming pool happens to be part of that residence, he can. Uh, Build the structure of the swimming pool, but a swimming pool contractor will have to be hired in order to finish a swimming pool. Right, so all, all the swimming pool work shall be subcontracted <clears throat> to a certified uh, registered swimming pool contractor. It's three types of those contractors, as you can see here, uh, depending which one it's. Uh, will serve your needs. That's uh, commercial, residential. And the third one is only allowed to do service, uh, additions, or cosmetic work to your pool. Now, we've established what a swimming pool consists of, or, or what constitutes a swimming pool. We know who can build it. But in the state of Florida, as of October 2000, uh, 2000 I'm sorry, October 1st of 2000, uh, we must follow uh, some safety requirements, and that is the Pool Safety Act. These requirements are what really most of the time very confusing to, uh, to our residents, and we'll try to cover it throughout our presentation. What I've done is, I go ahead and post a sample, and again, it's only a sample 
because all these requirements listed will be common to any pool safety act, uh, but the order might be different and different municipalities or jurisdictions might have a, a different form, even though the, the ways to comply will be the same throughout Florida. So what I've done is, as per this sample here, we're going to go through each, starting with the first one here, which is the pool being equipped with an approved safety pool cover or a, 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 a pool net, okay? And this is what it looks like. Now, any net that is used for these purposes must comply with ASDM 1346. In other words, just not just any pool net will do. It has to be tested and it will be tested as per these test standards. How do we know we say it, the pool net has been tested? Here is how we can get that information. First of all, it, it should appear on the packaging. Sometimes it will appear on the product itself. Uh, there is pool nets that are electric, there's pool nets that are mechanical. Those can get very pricey, but in those cases, the, the ASDM test standards will be stamped on the product itself. Now, it is very important very important to uh, to state that the word safety must be part of the description because they do have all the products that do meet standards as far as the materials, but these are for debris coming into the pool, leaves, or any you know falling debris. But it's not tested for safety of somebody falling into the pool. But the tank strength would not would not be the same. Uh, the, uh, the installation method might not be the same as well. So the word safety must be part of the description. All right, so that's one method. Second method, if we go back to our, to our safety act, could be the pool being isolated <clears throat> from any access by a mesh safety barrier, which is one of the most common ones that we see here in the beach. And that would look something like this. It will be a barrier 30, 48 inches uh, tall. And it will be all around the pool. Now, the Florida Building Code does not specify barrier required an end point or a, a, a gate, such as what you see here. Okay. Uh, as long as this gate is continuous and a section can be opened for entry by means of a uh, of a um, spring-loaded device that connects each panel together. So it doesn't have to be self-closing. It just needs to allow entry or the section being able to and here's where it gets tricky and where the, uh, a lot of the uh, controversy from our uh, residents come in. Each municipality has their own uh, municipal code and their own uh, rules when it comes to uh, pool safety. In the city of Miami Beach in particular, such is the case. And on the next slide, I'll show you what the code says. It says every swimming pool shall be protected by a sturdy non climbable safety barrier and by a self closing, self Ibrahim. 
No, he's not going to hear it. Okay, just give us a minute, please. Um, we're going to restart. Ibrahim seems to be frozen. Yeah, he's going to get back and he just. Hello, everybody. It appears like Ibrahim got disconnected. Um, yeah, he's he's reconnecting. Anna. OK, perfect. So in the meantime, we'll do a little song and dance and talk about <laughs> other issues. So welcome, everybody, again. Um, the uh, the focus of this presentation is going to be swimming pools and swimming pool protection. Uh, hopefully this is something you all are interested in. We will be doing another series next summer. Um, and we will have uh, planning on having uh, continuing information and and uh, trainings available. We are actually going to be doing one on the 24th that is about the new laws that are be that have been passed. So on Friday the 24th, it'll be in the morning from 10 to 12. And on Monday the 27th, it'll be in the afternoon from 4 to 6. So we're going to repeat the presentation two times in a row. If anyone um, and keep whichever one sounds better and smoother, that's the one we'll keep as as our final version that will be available for people to view online. And um, if you're not aware of this, there's a House bill that was passed and it's going to change timelines for plan reviews for residential drastically and for commercial a little bit. Um, and it includes uh, discounts on permits if the timelines are not met. And so um, I think it'll affect any city department that's pulling permits because um, it doesn't say except for city departments pulling permits. So uh, it may be something that you're interested in attending. So it'll be on the 24th from 10 to 12 or on the 27th from 4 to 6 p.m. And we and hope to see you we'll there. We'll be sending a link um, before the end of today. Yeah, Vic, Victor's setting it up, so he'll be sending everything out. Yeah, Cecilia, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to ask a quick question. I had no idea this was just about swimming pools because the title was something different. So just to double check on that so I can just take off and do my stuff. Yes, it is just about swimming pools. So if it's not something, it's about swimming pool safety, the barriers and the different rules for the swimming pools, because those are something we find a lot of issues with. OK, I'm if there's sorry. something specific, Cecilia, that you'd like to make sure we cover, um, let us know and we'll definitely since you are you are our one. Um, the, actually, it's you and I think Felipe are the outside participants. So if there's <laughs> a specific slant you guys want on this, let us know. I know oh, sometimes gosh. we have a lot of outside participants. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have very few. Um, 
don't get me started. But no, actually, I have to say a lot of things have improved since all my lists of complaints have gone through, and I appreciate that. The one thing that has me a little worried that um, I, I'm currently dealing with is the financial department mess that was caused by a glitch and um, it's taken forever. You know, I cannot build my client. Everything is taking weeks to just solve something. Um, I, so we, we, we feel your pain. Um, if, if you want, I can, I, if I could rewind time, I'd have a video of the day that Natasha walked in here almost crying when um, with what was going on. So I, I understand um, your frustration and your pain, and it's not like we're not all working to try to see how we can best smooth it out for you and for your for for, for all of our customers. So yeah, um, no, yeah. Natasha has been super responsive. She's adorable. I I contact. I actually I don't want to be a pest with you anymore. So I just want to contact these people directly. I did, but nobody responded actually. On the um, I Energov support, nobody has responded. Um, they're aware of the issue though so we have been working with them and we're working we're trying to work with our customers so if there's something that was held up because of the the weird financial glitch and you're having trouble with permit um inspections let us know and and we're, we've we've got workarounds that we we've been you know in an ideal world we wouldn't be doing this but things happen and um we've if last year taught us nothing it Sometimes your plans are not the plans that are the ones that happen. So yeah, no, we are I'm, adjusting with this and trying to make sure that at least the customer gets the service of the inspections. If it was something holding up inspections at plan review, so we we have been working with that. Yeah, she explained how to place inspection because the online uh, system does not work for that. Being that I have a hold, but what I learned actually is whenever I see something weird from the beginning, never, never make a payment until that is solved. And then I make a payment because, um, you know, I think it should have been a, a better option for me. But, but anyway, you know, we learn as we go. So, I know, and I un I understand. But if there's anything specific, any specific questions, um, you can always email us and we will get back to you with, with that area, okay? Yes. And as thank you for like coming. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Be well. Bye bye. So I don't know where Ibrahim has gone to. Anna, can I ask a quick question? You can. I'll try to make up an answer. I, I know this. I know that this presentation is, is uh, primarily for residential swimming pools um, and protection. Are well, it's residential and commercial, really. Okay. I mean, you can ask commercial questions Got because you. a lot of the rules for the uh, pool barriers are the same, are exactly the same. Okay. The big difference becomes that it, sometimes in, in commercial, it becomes extra challenging to try to get them to, um, to fit in and, and you have to get a, a little creative with how to get the the proper um you know protection around the pools because they're not necessarily in in all commercial settings they definitely no one wants to take their most beautiful asset the pool and the beach and then surround the pool and make it hard to get to at the same time it's a life safety issue and so um we've we've done some creative ways of getting things there so long as um, there's a self-closing door that has a um, some sort of swipe or something at 54 inches or above, that's considered okay, and we work with that. Um, so we've done in in the commercial, it, it can get challenging. Ask um, Ibrahim questions when he gets on. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I have a copy of his presentation. He sent me a link, but I'm not sure. Let me go find it now. You know how great I am with this technology. I love it. Let me.
to that. Email it to who? Okay. It didn't give you a call to mail? No, I just don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just for two. You know what I mean? I thought there would be, be two. There should be. How many sets did he give you? He gave me one. Oh, three. No, um, Wait, three I copies? Said, yeah, that's it. He's stupid because he should have only given you two. No, just three. I mean, not three sets. Yeah. It's probably Martin, not Martin. Dumb fuck. So we did, um... Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is package six for 2020. Got uh, yeah, no, let me see 2940. What it is? I know it's probably package six, too. Yeah, it's, it's both package six, it's just two ah, different addresses, right? So, and no, they just two different ones. Yeah, this is that Martin's face. Is there one that you want me to submit it for? Or you want me no, to no, it he needs thing? to tell us. I'm not playing guessing games. Yeah, yeah, you know, he is submitting something to a, an agency. And he needs to provide who he's submitting it for. So, right. but we could probably talk to Lulu because Lulu has. <laughs> Ibrahim, you're back. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. I seem to have had some uh, technical issues with my computer. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Back to where we were. Ibrahim, but let's take it from the top since we have some new people that joined. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, again, this presentation is part of our summer series. Uh, in this particular presentation, we're going to be uh, discussing residential swimming pools as for the Florida Building Code. I will try to concentrate on the Safety Act and the barrier requirements, because it seems to be uh, one of the subjects that are, is always very confusing for our residents. Uh, I believe that the first thing we should be getting into is what constitutes a swimming pool. As you can see now on your screens, there's several examples of swimming pools, but the one thing to, to keep in mind is that as per Chapter 4 of the Florida Building Code, any structure intended for swimming, recreation, or bathing or wading that contains over 24 inches of water. So water feature or what have you, if it's deeper than 24 inches, any safety uh, requirements that apply to a swimming pool would apply as well. Who can construct a swimming pool? That will be the next question that we're going to try to answer uh, after we have established what a swimming pool is. And the answer to that is, any contractor can do the structure for a swimming pool. Any contractor that's working, for example, on a residence, and part of that residence is a swimming pool, the structural components of the swimming pool can be constructed by that particular contractor. But the remaining work for the swimming pool must be subcontracted to a uh, swimming pool uh, license contract. There's three types of the state 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 state. and they're listed uh, here below. According to your needs, obviously, you would choose what um, what seems to uh, pretend to you. For example, commercial pools, residential pools, 
And the third one in particular may not construct anything new. He may do repairs, do swim outs, and do maintenance on your pool, but no new construction. All right, so we know what a swimming pool uh, consists of. We know who can build it. But in the state of Florida, as of uh, October 1st, 2000, there's something called the Safety Act. And these are some safety guidelines that every swimming pool in Florida needs to uh, abide by. This is where the confusion comes in. There is a form that must be filled out every time a pool permit is, is, is pulled. It's called the Safety Act form. And in that form, all the methods of security that are approved by the Florida Building Code that can be used on your pool will be listed. And here is what that form looks like. Now again, this is, a, this is a, an example. It's They can vary in, uh, not in content, but they can vary in how the forms uh, look or where they place their different uh, methods of compliance. But the methods of compliance themselves are all going to be the same. Maybe not in the same order, but they all will be methods of compliance that are approved by the Florida Building Code. And you will choose the one that more closely, uh, or the one that by using in your resident gives you the, the, the most flexibility. Uh, in this case, for example, in this particular sample, we start with the uh, the pull net. Pull nets are very common, but not any pull net will do. Pull net that we need to use in order to satisfy the for a building code needs to comply with the STM F1346. So this ASDM 3046 is an approved testing method that um, that is for this uh, for this type of netting, and no other uh, type of uh, net can be used on the on your pool. How do we know it's been tested and approved by ASDM? Okay. For once, as you can see here on the on the next slide. It may say so on the package. It may even say so on the product itself. There's different types of nets uh, that are approved. There's mechanical nets, there's even electrical nets. And in those cases, the, the ASDM number uh, or the test number might be listed on the product itself. Very important that you notice that safety the word safety must appear on the product because there are all there are other nets that are, they do fabricate even maybe the same company but these are meant for debris maybe leaves things that will fall into the pool but it's not tested for human safety so the word safety has to be part of the description all right so Let's go back to our form and address the next method of, uh, of security, which again, it may not be in this order on another form, but it will be one of the methods that will be listed in any of the Safety Act uh, forms. And that is a, uh, a mesh uh, barrier around the pool. This one is very common used a lot in the city of Miami Beach. Here's what it looks like. Okay. As you can see on this particular case, there is a gate that's included, which may not have to be there. In other words, the Florida Building Code does not require an entry gate for this type of barrier. The barrier completely surrounds the pool in one section of the barrier can be either opened uh, by means of a uh, spring-loaded device hook 
that attaches each one of the sections and the section can be removed for entry that would comply with the building code. The problem is, and this is part of the confusion comes in, especially here in the city of Miami Beach, each municipality has their own safety code as far as uh, uh, swimming pools. And the city of Miami Beach is no exception. In fact, we, as I will show you in the next slide, do have our own section for swimming pools. And if I can, if I can get rid of this um, pop up. I can read it for you. All right. So it says every swimming pool shall be protected by a safety non climbable barrier. That is self closing. And approve, obviously approve the building official. Also, the safety barrier should be no less than four feet. That's 54 inches. It may be around the premises or it may be around the swimming pool itself. So what that means is, if you choose to go with this method without a gate, your property, if you live in Miami Beach, will have to have a barrier around the premises that has a, a self-closing gate that is at least four feet in height or has a, a latching device or an opening device that is at least uh, 54 inches in order to reach a device that is self-closing and self-latching. Now, there's a way to basically comply with both uh, methods, and that is to put a gate on your existing um, a safety net, or not a safety net, I'm sorry, on your existing child barrier net. So by putting this gate here, you don't have to comply the barrier around the perimeter of your property. Without this gate, you will have to comply with the gate around the perimeter of your property. If that's what you choose, here you are, are the requirements that that gate must meet. And obviously one of them being 54 inches. Also, still on the, on the gates and the barrier, this is the, our, our second option for, for safety methods. It's going to be penetrations. In this case, whether you choose to go with the gate or just the barrier around the pool, it will still apply. The barrier may not have any gaps, openings, or indentations, intrusions, or structural components that would allow a young child to fall under, squeeze through, or climb over the barrier, as you can describe below. So you can see there's a four inch sphere. Uh, in diameter that by name uh, go below the fence, through the fence, whether it is a wire mesh fence or a uh, wood fence, there's several different types of uh, barriers you may use, but these requirements will apply on all of them. Third method you can use to go back to our uh, sample of the safety act. It will be a screen enclosure. It's also a pretty common method of, uh, of security. And you can see a sample over here. Now, it's important to know as well the screen enclosures that they can be a combination of methods. For example, if you look at the one in the left hand corner, the lower corner, we have a uh, child barrier fence, a gate in the latch at 54, separated from the house, 
and the rest of the enclosure, it's the discrete itself. As long as this child neck goes from one end to the other end. So basically this area here outside the, the shell barrier is exempt. But the screen itself constitutes the rest of the of the security uh, measure. You have all the cases like this. Where. There might be a we haven't gone into yet, but there might be a combination of alarms on these doors. And any door that exits from the screen enclosure itself will have to comply as well with a 54 inch uh, matching device and the, and the self closing. Next method. Which. Usually. It's a combined method. Uh, but it, it should be used by itself as, uh, as well. And that is the pool. Uh, I'm sorry, or the property having alarms the doors. This is what that looks like. If the property, or if you choose to go with this method, any door leading to the pool, any door or window lower than 54 inches to the sill height, will have to have an alarm. Contact alarm that when uh, the contact is is broken will uh, make a sound uh, that needs to be compliant with UL 2017. That is a test standard for search alarms. Now, there's a way to get around that. That's by combining these methods. Usually what, what we see a lot is gates. Around the house. Or maybe halfway into the yard. The key is, as you can see on the. On the right hand corner here of the slide. This is a layout of the house. There's a residence and pool. Second, let me go back here and find where I can write. Uh, OK. So. This line here being your perimeter fence. Uh, obviously, if this was your only means of security around the house, any window or door on this house will have to have an alarm. If this perimeter exists, but I choose to put a gate here or here, that complies with the 54 inch lodge that is self closing. And again, from I don't know if I said this before, but it was on uh, on our code section. Opens towards the outside, or opens away from the pool area. Then you can reduce the amount of alarms to anything beyond. On my cursor here, beyond this point where you have uh, created a barrier. So anything on this side of the house will not need an alarm. Anything from here and beyond that it's a door or window. Again, you can see it here. Having a bottom shield height. 48 inches or more. We'll need uh, an alarm compliant with you all 2017. Lastly, this is something that's controversial in my view, but it is approved by code. And that is a motion activated pull alarm. With this type of pull alarm, what happens is if a shelf happens to fall in the pool, or anything that will cause a, a wave. Uh, that would hit the sensor, it would activate the alarm, and again, the alarm has to comply 
with the SDM standards as far as the sound that it makes and the frequency of it. But by using this, it's just like a safety net over the pool. No other uh, safety barrier uh, needs to apply. You don't need a shallow fence. You don't need a, uh, a fence around your, pro uh, around your pool. But you do need to make sure the correct wording is on the packaging. Obviously, any of these methods will be part of your uh, final inspection. And just to repeat myself, that any of these methods would suffice. You can combine some of them, but any of them by itself would suffice as far as uh, your security methods. Once a final inspection is called for, you would need, first of all, a Lansing permit to be on site. And it is very important that that safety act that we showed earlier be attached to those plans or be available for the inspector to, to analyze while on site. Okay. It is very important as well that any permit that is attached to your master permit, which is most schools will require electrical, mechanical, plumbing permits, be on final status. Any inspections that are part of that master permit and planning and zoning comes to mind will also be in final status. So access to those plans, very important. Anything that is linked to the master permit needs to be on site. That's also very important. Uh, again, I know that this when I clear all the questions on it, uh, but again, we are here to help. And any questions that you have about it, obviously, here's our administration and my personal information. If you want to get specific on any of this, uh, methods of security for your pool. Again, thank you very much for attending. And please feel free to give me a call. Uh, I have both my extension and my cell phone listed here above. Thank you again. Are there any questions? Ibrahim, I have a quick question. Yes, absolutely. So with the, uh, the mention of the Pool Safety Act form that you were saying that this must be uh, completed and included with the permit application, the sample that you right. showed was, was for residential. Um, it's the same for commercial, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So we have these options, okay. It would, it would be included uh, uh, with the plans as part of your final inspection. Let me ask you, this uh, motion activated pool alarm, if if the facility has uh, more than one pool, let's say like two, two pools, uh, are there certain requirements? Is it just one alarm per pool or does, does it vary by the size of the pool? If, if there are several pools, each pool will have to have its own device. Okay, but just one, one per pool will, will be acceptable? That Right, well, that would uh, depend on the specifications of the device. There might be different devices and different size of devices, and it will tell you on the specs how big of a, uh, of a uh, you know, how big of a pool or Got how much area it is Got good it. for. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Anybody else have any questions for, uh, and it can be on uh, commercial pools also. I, I know the focus has been residential, but I know that th there might be some questions about res about commercial pools or so or something within the pool within the Pool Safety Act that anyone else has. Ibrahim is here to answer the questions. Please feel free to ask if there's something um, that you've that you've got any concerns. Anyone else have anything to ask? Okay, I guess there's a lot of silence. So um, again, thank you for attending. Thank you all for uh, being part of our summer series and uh, hopefully we will continue with more presentations. We do have one planned for the 24th of this month that will be on the new House Bill uh, 1089 and it'll be on the 10th at from 10 to noon and on if not on the Monday the 27th from uh, 4 to 6 p.m. And we hope you can uh, join us there and we can um, discuss this new house bill and how it will or it may affect you in your permitting. And thank you for attending and thank you, um, Ibrahim, for uh, presenting and representing the information on the on the pool safety barrier. I think the number one um, cause of uh, deaths in people under a certain age in Florida have to do with actually with drowning. And so the Pool Safety Act is something to try to uh, help us get out of that being our number one um, cause of death. So uh, thank you all for attending and you have a have a good day. Be well, everyone. Bye bye. And again, I want to remind every everyone, uh, Anna, that, that I know most likely the minute we in the presentation, they're going to think of a question or <laughs> something they forgot. Please feel free to contact me. At the information uh, on your screens. Uh, yeah, put go back to your phone again. number. Go back yes. to your phone number so that they there can. There we go. There you go. There you go. You can call him either either to this number or you call him to his um at the to the city phone and then his extension. And thank you all again for attending, and we appreciate your participation. Thank you. Thank you.